الحمد لله الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهدي الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان سيدنا محمدا عبده ورسوله اما بعد يقول الله تعالى في القران العظيم اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ان هذا القران يهدي للتي هي اقوى ويبشر المؤمنين الذين يعملون الصالحات ان لهم اجرا كبيرا وان الذين لا يؤمنون بالاخره اعتدنا لهم عذابا اليما صدق الله العظيم all praises are for allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we glorify allah and we thank our creator for his blessings and his favors upon us i testify that there is none to be worshiped but allah he is alone and he has no partner and i testify that prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is his servant and final messenger ibadallah my dear brothers and my dear sisters Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Al-Qur'an Inna hadha al-Qur'an yahdi lillati hiya aqwam Verily this Qur'an it guides to that which is most upright Allah also reminds us that this Qur'an it serves as a bringer a bringer of glad tidings to those who believe and do righteous deeds that they will have a magnificent reward with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this Quran that we read so often and we listen to so often Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also says that it serves as a warning to those who disbelieve that they will have a severe chastisement with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so as Muslims, my dear brothers and my dear sisters, we need to make sure that Quran it is always followed that our lives are lived in accordance with the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In the Quran, there are laws in terms of do's and don'ts, in terms of lawful and unlawful. In the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us about people before those who accepted the laws of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah reminds us of how successful they were and those who rejected the laws of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah reminds us that they were perished they were punished and so as muslims when we look at the do's and don'ts and the lawful and unlawful we also need to reflect upon the stories in the quran and see what impact it can have on our lives in how we can gain from the successes and the failures of those who preceded us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He reminds us in the Quran about 
the story of Ashab al the companions of the cave. And today, I am not going to, you know, relate the whole story, but like I said, we need to learn from the stories of the Quran. I see a lot of young people here today. Ashab al they were youth. And as we look at their story, there are certain things that we can implement within our lives. And that's what I would like to share with you in terms of reminding myself and reminding you as to how we benefit from those who preceded us. As Muslims, we need to be steadfast in our faith. We, we need to make sure that the values that we have, it is ever present within us on a daily basis, all the time. Steadfastness in faith, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he, he tells us that if you are steadfast, that you will have that peace of mind, you will have no fear, and you will have no grief. And especially at the time when you will leave this world, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is reminding us that when the angels come to take our lives, we will be given that glad tidings. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says in the Quran, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ قَالُوا رَبُّنَ اللَّهُ ثُمَّ اسْتَقَامُوا تَتَنَزَّلُوا عَلَيْهِمُ الْمَلَائِكَةُ أَلَّا تَخَافُوا وَلَا تَحْزَنُوا وَأَبْشِرُوا بِالْجَنَّةِ الَّتِي كُنْتُمْ تُوْعَدُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Verily, those who say Allah is our Lord, and then they establish that steadfastness, that commitment, that dedication. The angels come to them at the time of death and say, Fear not, grieve not, but have glad tidings of that which you by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's what all of us would like to have when we are about to leave this world, my dear brothers and my dear sisters. And so in life, we will have trials. We will have challenges. We will have you know, tribulations, we will have, we will experience difficulties, but at no time should we lose hope. We should always make sure that we have that reliance on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says in the Quran, وَلَا نَبْلُوَنَّكُمْ بِشَيْءٍ مِّنَ الْخَوْفِ وَالْجُوعِ وَنَقْسِمْ مِنَ الْأَمْوَالِ وَالْأَنْفُسِ وَالثَّمَرَاتِ وَبَشِّرِ الصَّابِرِينَ الَّذِينَ إِذَا أَصَابَتْهُمْ مُصِيبَةٌ قَالُوا إِنَّا لِلَّهِ وَإِنَّا إِلَيْهِ رَاجِعُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, And verily we will test you with something of fear and hunger. And we will test you through the last of lives and wealth, properties, crops. And if we look in the world today that we exist in, we would see that people are being tested. They face these challenges every day of their lives. Some people live in fear every day. Some people, they, they, they experience hunger on a regular basis. We all have experienced the loss of lives in our families. 
And, and, and look at the people in Hawaii, just in a split second, they lost everything, all their properties from a wildfire. They lost, you know, people lost crops, things that they had planted and they were hoping to reap. But they not, never had the opportunity to reap. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, when you are being faced with difficulties and trials and tribulations, you put your trust in Allah. What do you do? You have patience. And, and, and you have that embedded within you. Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'oon. To Allah we belong and to Allah is our return. And so, when we look at the companions of the cave, these were youth who had belief and they had certain values. They saw some practices in their community that they were not willing to accept because it, was, it, it were practices that were not in line with the laws of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so they, they, they demonstrated, they, they, they demonstrated to the people that they were not in acceptance of these practices. It, that's the, when you say, like Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, لَيْسَ الْإِيمَانِ بِالْتَمَنِّي وَلَكِنْ مَا وَقَرَ فِي الْقَلْبِ وَصَدَّقَهُ الْعَمَلِ Iman is not a mere wish or hope, but Iman is that which is registered in the heart and it is being approved by the limbs of the body. They demonstrated their true faith. They were not willing to accept that which was against the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's what we learn, my dear brothers and my dear sisters, that we as Muslims, we will see that in this rapidly changing world that we exist in, we would see so many practices that are contrary to the teachings of our deen. And so we should not be, allow ourselves to get caught up in these practices. In this society that we live in, the, there are people or there are forces that are trying to make or normalize everything. To make even the unlawful normal so that we can accept it. If we do have true faith, we have to make sure that we are people who demonstrate that faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When we look at the youth in the cave, we look at their reliance on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They decided to leave their homes, their families, so that they can protect their faith, their values. And they went and took refuge in a cave. And so we as Muslims, we understand that one of the, one of the qualities of the believers is that they are people who put their trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah says in the Quran, إِنَّمَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ الَّذِينَ إِذَا ذُكِرَ اللَّهِ وَجِلَتْ قُلُوبُهُمْ وَإِذَا تُلِيَتْ عَلَيْهِمْ آيَاتُهُ زَادَتْهُمْ إِيمَانًا وَعَلَى رَبِّهِمْ يَتَوَكَّلُونَ Verily, the believers are those when Allah is being mentioned, they feel a tremor in their hearts. And when the, when the signs of Allah are being rehearsed unto them, 
their faith increases and their believers are those who put their trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Imagine the whole community was against them, but they had that comfort that they can call upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they can put their trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so we, we always need to persevere with prayers, dua, dhikr, turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When they went into the cave, my dear brothers and my dear sisters, what is it that they did? These youth, they called upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they said, Rabbana atina min ladunka rahma. Our Lord, grant us from you. They're, they're asking for what? Rahmah. They want Rahmah. They want Allah to be compassionate unto them. And they ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for guidance. Grant us guidance in our affair. And so we always need to put our trust in Allah, call upon Allah, Udu'uni astajib lakum. Call upon me and I will answer your prayers. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala answer our call. And so always make dua, call upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My dear brothers and my dear sisters, These youth who went into the cave, they were not people who were together before they flew and took refuge in that cave. But they were individuals who walked away from the practices that they felt were wrong. And then they came together. And so, my dear brothers and my dear sisters, what this teaches us, that as Muslims, we need to look for people who have shared the same faith like us and people who have the same values like us. So if you are a young man, a young woman, you, you look for people who will help you maintain your faith and to maintain your values. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, Al Maru ala dini khalilihi, falyanzur ahadukum man yukhalil. A person is upon the way of life of his friend, of his companion. So look as to whom you choose to be your companion. When you look at families, you look to see families that you can relate to it, that they share the same faith and the same values. You look for friends, you look for your neighbors, whoever it is. Because in this world that we live in, the, the forces of evil are greater than the forces of good. And we want to surround ourselves with good people. We want to make sure that our children, they are growing up in the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Sab'atun yudhilluhumu Allahu fi dhilli, yawma la dhilla illa dhillu. There are seven categories of people who will be shaded by the shade of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on that day when there will be no shade except the shade of Allah. One of them, Shabun Nasha'a fi ibadatillah, a young person who has been brought up in the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you, you want to make sure that you spend your time, the effort, the sacrifices it is with those who will help you to stay in ibadah, in the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says in the Qur'an, وَتَعَاوَنُوا عَلَى الْبِرِّ وَالتَّقْوَى 
and, and cooperate with people, like-minded people, people who will help you to, to, to strive towards piety, righteousness, God-fearingness. That's, that's where you want to go, my dear brothers and my dear sisters. And, and that's what these youth, they did. They, they stayed together with people who will help them to maintain their values in their faith. But when we look at this story, we need to look at their, again, their patience and their trust in divine timing. They went into the cave and they, when they woke up, they thought that they had slept for a day or part of a day. But they really slept for hundreds of years. And that's the work of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When Allah wants to protect you, us, Allah will protect us in ways that we never imagine. What does he say in the Quran? As for the one who fears Allah, who has taqwa, who has piety, righteousness, God-fearingness, when you think that there is no opening, Allah will grant you opening. When you think that you, there is no sustenance coming to you, Allah will grant you sustenance from places that you never imagined. And each one of us have to have that belief that yes, this will happen by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There's so many, and even Muslims, they lose hope. Do not lose hope in the rahmah, in the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Always be resilient. Always has, have that positive attitude with regards to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Remember that ultimate power is in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And whatever Allah wants to be, it will be. He says, kun fayakun, be and it is. This is the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And, and that is what brings comfort and strength to us, my dear brothers and my dear sisters. It is said by our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, ajaban li amril mu'min, Wonderful indeed is the affair of a believer. Whenever good comes his way, he is thankful to his creator. And that is good for him. And whenever he is being faced with trials and tribulations, challenges, difficulties in life, he puts his trust in his creator and he has patience. And this is how we need to live our lives. We are living, as I said, in rapidly changing times. And if we don't stay steadfast, maintain our values, put our trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we are looking for the, you know, destruction in our lives. We are looking for a chaotic society. And so, together, we need to work to make sure that we have that steadfastness, we demonstrate our true belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we maintain our values and don't compromise them in any way, because this is what society wants us to do, to compromise our belief and our values and that we always have that patience that the time of Allah will unfold when Allah wants it to unfold. 
and, and we should not be, you know, that type of people who want everything to be done instantaneously. That's the nature of man. You want something, you want it to be done immediately. The help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it comes and it may come at time that we never imagined. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to benefit from his book. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to live our lives in accordance with the Quran. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to learn from those who preceded us. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa li sa'ir al-mu'min al-mu'minat min kulli dhamb fa astaghfirun innahu huwa al-ghafur al-rahim. Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa salatu wa salam wa la sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahabihi ajma'in Ridwanullahi alayhim ila yawmiddin Amma ba'd My dear brothers and my dear sisters when, when we look at the companions of the cave Ashabul Ka'af we, we look at people who stood for the truth. And so in our lives, we will experience that even within our own families, that there are those who will deny the truth. We must always be committed to be champions of the truth. We must always stand up for justice. We must always speak up against falsehood and injustice. And we must always strive to be a positive influence in our community. This is so much important, my dear brothers and my dear sisters. This is not, this positive influence, is, it is not the responsibility only of the Imam and the leaders of the Masajid, but it is for all of us to strive together to be positive influences in our community. Let's strive to promote unity, promote equality. Let's strive to make sure that there is compassion in all our interactions. You know, you may have heard some of what I said today. You may have heard it in previous khutbah. But we need to repeat this regularly because if we don't take it seriously, my dear brothers and my dear sisters, we will find so many will be drifting away from the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I said previously that maybe we only have a tiny percentage of people who come to the Masajid on Fridays. Look at what happens on other days. Look at what happened for other Salah. So when we look at this crowd, we think that we are okay. But we are not really okay. And I would encourage more of our leaders and those who give khutbah to remind our audience about the challenges that we faced in present day society. Maybe challenges 
that were not there in previous times. Challenges that it was confined to a small group of people. These are challenges that we are seeing that it is widespread. And every single day, each and every one of us, we are being confronted with these challenges. Think about it. We pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala helps Muhammad to remain Muhammad. And we pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala helps Fatima to remain Fatima. We pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us in this rapidly changing world where there, you know, there are so many challenges with regards to gender identity but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala helps us, helps us to maintain our identity. We pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us good in this life and good in the life hereafter. And that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala save us from the torment of the hellfire. Laqad amaran Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fil Qur'an al-Azim haythu qal Inna Allahu wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala al-Nabi Ya ayyuha al-lazina amanu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima Allahumma salli wa sallim ala abdika rasulika Muhammad wa arda Allahumma man khulafaihi al-arba Abi Bakr wa Umar wa Uthman wa Alim wa nisittati al-baqin wa bashirin bil jannah wa nisairi al-sahaba wa nitabi'in wa man tabi'hum bisanin la yawmiddin Allahumma aiza islama wal muslimin Allahumma nawbir kulubana bin nur al-iman wa thabbit kulubana ala din al-islam وَلَا تَجْعَلْ فِي قُلُوبِنَا غِلَّ لِلَّذِينَ آمَنُوا رَبَّنَا إِنَّكَ رَوْفُ الرَّحِيمِ عباد الله إن الله يمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والباغي ذكم لكم تذكرون فاشكروا الله على نعمه واذكروه على آلائه ولذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون أكمل الصلاة